Hi there, Lucia. Nice to see that you've written your first set of essays for us. Great job. Let's take a look and see what you said here. The first essay is about doing an enjoyable activity with a child. Here's what you said. The most effective method in improving and developing better skills and imagination in children is considered to be the performance of entertaining tasks. Uh, okay. In my opinion, I agree that children can achieve much better results in general areas related to their imaginary and general abilities throughout relaxing and delightful activities. This essay will discuss that statement using examples from Oxford University and the Spanish Institute for Children Children's uh, Apostrophe S Development to demonstrate points per argument. Okay, um, I was a little confused because you made this its own paragraph. You should not have. You should have just tacked it on to the next sentence because one sentence on its own is not a paragraph. Generally, as you probably know from the course, we typically recommend a four paragraph structure. I see here it looks like you have what, six? No, you need to have four. Um, for example, this should have been attached to the paragraph that follows it as should this. It should have been attached to the paragraph right above it. So what this is going to affect your coherence and cohesion score you see because they're looking for logical paragraphing and when you have just like one sentence on its own even if you have it like that because you want to emphasize it it's not doing you any favors um it, on the contrary it's actually doing you um basically some harm because it shows a lack of understanding about how we paragraph so um let's move on on the one hand, there is ample evidence that children who, no, who develop their motor skills often tend to be healthier and consequently be better focused as well. For example, a National Geographic study based on 2,000 families living in developed countries states that those who spend a reasonable amount of time practicing outdoor activities are more often successful within their studies than those who do not. Therefore, it is clear that relaxing the mind and exercising the body leads children to better academic performance. Now you can see I've replaced a couple of words. I've replaced this don't with do not, and I've replaced kids with children. The reason for that is because we don't use contractions or the word kids in IELTS essays. They're considered both and we're considered informal. And we need to use um, academic formal language. Okay? That's why. Okay, so let's move on. On the other hand, although it is commonly stated that reading books is undoubtedly great to improve imagination, it is also common to see children express creativity and concentration by playing games. This is largely because generally children enjoy physical activity very much. For instance, Oxford University has released a study showing that children that play football usually perform better in class. In class. Even computer video games helps no help them to achieve better reflexes. Consequently, it is possible to state beyond doubt that reading is not the only option to exercise creative power. Hold on a second. So, you said here that children express their creativity by playing games, but then everything else you said about playing games doesn't really have anything to do with creativity. You said they perform better in class. And then you said they achieve better reflexes. So how does any of this relate to creativity? So what you're doing here essentially is you're having ideas that don't logically progress, that they don't like, they don't uh, have solid links together. And so this is really going to affect your coherence and cohesion score. Now, unfortunately, what's also going to happen is because you're not really developing your ideas adequately, it's also going to affect your task achievement. So the same uh, set of sentences are going to be essentially graded in two different ways on two different uh, criteria. So um, like I said, it creates some problems here in terms of the way you organize your ideas, the way your sentences flow together, but also in how well you actually develop your ideas. Okay. Um, to conclude from the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that enjoyable activities like outdoor exercise or playing computer video games are better at improving children's apostrophe as general abilities and imagination. It is predicted that children in moderate countries more increasingly spend more time doing such joy playful activities. 
Okay, so I think I've been pretty clear about what the problems are with this essay, uh, with this paragraph right here. Um, here, I think I gave you some feedback as well as to what was the problem here. I explained to you what was wrong with this particular um, structure, that you needed to put these two paragraphs together. Likewise, you needed to put these two paragraphs together. Okay. Um, so grammar seemed okay. The vocabulary was okay. There wasn't anything particularly high level that would make me say, oh yeah, this is advanced vocabulary. It was just, it was intermediate vocabulary, okay? So think about that as you progress in the course and that you want to try to use maybe some less common, some more advanced vocabulary here. Uh, I want you to really work on these uh, aspects of task achievement and coherence and cohesion. All right, so let's see what else we have. Okay, here's your second essay. This one is about schools and whether they should be more entertaining or if they should just focus on education. Let's see what you said. Experts throughout lowercase t, both the developing and developed world have debated about the considerably, no, about the considerable benefits of the traditional education system, which focuses exclusively on education itself, comma, leaving behind any kind of amusement, which is indeed considered to be not only an unnecessary, but a negative distraction in the learning process. That's a sentence that goes on for three and a half lines. Too much. You should have broken it up somewhere. Personally, I strongly disagree. This essay will argue that statement using examples from Oxford University studies along with recent sociological and psychological debates from different socials so lowercase s lowercase s institutes around Europe okay um, fine firstly there is ample with an e not y evidence that children who have been encouraged to learn while playing no who have been encouraged to play while learning have developed incredibly, no, get rid of incredibly, have developed better skills while trying to resolve problems in maths and physics, full stop. It is the sociologist Kelly Olson from the University of Duesto in Spain who elaborated an extended thesis, lowercase t, about the significant importance, no, either significance or importance, but not significant importance, just pick one. For children, no. No, no. So, uh, who elaborated an extended thesis about the significance of amusement while learning for children. That's the correct word order. She stated that statistics revealed a huge improvement in the academic results when children were led... No, when children were amused at the same time that they were taught. T-A-U-G-H-T. New without the K, knowledge and skills to achieve better ways to approach dilemmas. For example, she noticed that the children who were achieving poor academic results reached a considerably reached a considerable improvement once they started learning while playing and enjoying the class with songs and video games. The happier they were, the better they did. Therefore, it is conclusively clear that enjoyment must be taken on board with on board uh no, that enjoyment must be taken on board the learning journey. That's how you want to do this, okay? So grammatical problems in this paragraph. Let's take a look at the next one. Secondly, it is the fact that physical exercise performed in a placeful and enjoyable way. Uh, hold on. It is. Uh, I'm a little confused here. Let me try the sentence again. All right, I think there's an extra word here. That's what the problem is. So, secondly, it is fact that physical exercise performed in a playful and enjoyable way helps children to relax, puts, puts their minds at ease with an E, and develops their reflexes and balances results in a considerably... I don't know what that means. I don't know what considerably upgrade means. For instance, recent studies brought by the Sociological College of Denmark you don't mean recent studies brought. Recent studies published. Recent studies um, just by the Sociological College demonstrated that the children not only showed a considerable improvement in their conduct during the class, but a better capacity to focus on the tasks when they had to develop once yoga time. What? Had to develop 
they, a better capacity to focus on the tasks they had to do once yoga was introduced in their class, in their daily routine. Thus, it is possible to say that having extra time during classes to exercise and relax impacts directly on children's apostrophe S motivational mood, leading to a better educational program. Now, obviously, you're trying to use um, yoga as an example of entertainment. Um, for, for a lot of people, yoga is not entertainment. Is it relaxing? Yes. Is it meditative? Yes. Is it uh, physically rigorous and demanding at times? Yes. But show to us that this is an example of entertainment. That's the focus of this essay, entertainment, not what happens when children are, you know, just doing something that gets them away from the classroom, okay? Moving on. So, from the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that the educational system must take into account the importance of entertaining activities and entertaining focus in general while teaching. It is predicted that more and more schools will consider more seriously. No. It is considered, it is predicted that more and more schools will consider this way of educating children more seriously in the near future. You never separate your verb from your object, so the more seriously has to go elsewhere. Okay? Um, again, I'm going to tell you that you should not separate this from this. They belong in one paragraph together. Um, that was the problem with paragraphing. Otherwise, your paragraphing was fine. I'm definitely happier with the development in this uh, essay. It feels uh, more on topic. It feels more appropriate. Um, fine, okay? So uh, clearly there are some things you have to work on, some syntax things, some grammar things, as well as some of those issues about paragraphing that we talked about in both essays. All right, so what the next thing you have to do is you have to correct these essays based on this video correction. Then you need to um, create an error correction list where you write down all the errors that were pointed out to you next to each error, uh, the corrected version, okay? That's something that you're going to add to with each essay correction you get back. Then the third thing you need to do is write a new set of essays. Um, use all the things you've been learning on the course and through these video corrections to help you. So go ahead and get that started and let's meet back here with your next set of essays. Okay, good luck.